Hello and welcome to the special edition of Quality of Life. Today we're coming from the Plymouth Art Center on location and we're located in the Gallery 110 North. Uh, joining us today is Kitty Lynn Klitsch, who's a local artist here in mm -hmm. Sheboygan County and the Executive Director of the Plymouth Art Center, Donna Hahn. Ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Thanks, Dave. Okay. I'd like to start out with you, Kitty, as far as how have you become involved in art, you know, in your, in your journeys through it? Well, I, uh, I, I've always loved art. I loved it as a child, and uh, there were long periods of my life when I wasn't able to create art. But um, when I was in, I would say, in, in my 30s, then I really took it up seriously. And uh, when I moved to Wisconsin, I was teaching, and I had the opportunity. There was a new art center opening up in Plymouth, and I had the opportunity to have a class here. And that one class soon turned into four classes, and 18 years later, I finally retired from, from teaching here at the art center. And I also, um, you know, I do uh, different forms of art. I like to act, I've been in plays, and there's just so many ways that a person can express themselves artistically. And I, I feel that I'm a creative person, and so I'm always thinking of ways to create. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one other special um, activity that you take part in is your own, actually, TV show on WSCS TV called Painting Journeys. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Right. I Originally, I had a show that was uh, based, it was the name of the show was Gallery Works, and it was based on um, the artists that showed here at the Plymouth Art Center. And the reason for that show was to give these emerging artists a chance to be seen in the area, you know, throughout the viewing area. But then, um, when I retired from teaching, I thought, okay, what what is it? What am I going to do that's going to keep me going? That's going to keep me alive and fresh? And I thought, I'll create a television show that will be for people that are like shut in or that don't understand the arts or have ne don't have any experience with them and so I created a show named Painting Journeys and that show is based on um, where I travel and then I come and I do the show and I paint in the journey across the canvas as I tell about my experiences on my trip and that I also am sharing my creative process. And the, the show is really taken off. It's seen nationally now. I'm very proud of that. But my main goal for that show is to bring art into the lives of those that may not have okay. uh, that opportunity to get out and actually see art. Okay. Now, Donna, as ex executive producer and director of the Art Center, what is your role and how are you involved with art? As the executive director, I kind of run the show at the Art Center, mm -hmm. uh, meaning I oversee a lot of the shows. I don't actually direct uh, like a theater program mm -hmm. or a concert, but I take care of all the administration work, uh, you know, all the behind the scenes work, all the advertising, the marketing of the shows. Uh, we do a lot of communication with uh, the actors, all the artists, you know, all of that. Uh, all those things go through our office. Nice. So in the Art Center where we are today at Gallery 110 North is the holiday uh, membership exhibition. Could you tell us about that? Well, we have six shows per year and the holiday membership is, show is just one of those shows and it features our members work. So if you're a member of the Plymouth Art Center, you're allowed to submit one entry to this show and we will automatically hang it for you. Of course, the gallery team has the final word on the piece, but we do um, most, most often hang everything that's uh, provided to us. And then we, ha uh, we have a prospectus that we send out earlier in the, the fall and we ask for the uh, member artists to submit their pieces. And uh, we do get quite a few of our members uh, participating mm -hmm. that way, and we get new members to participate. So we put the call out actually to the whole state of Wisconsin and beyond because our membership goes beyond Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So everyone that uh, is a member can put their piece in the show, and then we hire a judge, and then we give away awards, um, certificates, and uh, in this particular show, we have the best of show for second and third, and then the Robert Hoyle 
Memorial Award and Merit Awards. And so it's, it's a real wonderful thing for an artist to you know, have their artwork on display in a gallery and then the t uh, icing on the cake is to receive an award. Definitely. Go may ahead, Kitty. Uh, may, may I add sure. to that too? Um, as an emerging artist, as someone that has never had the opportunity to show in an actual gallery setting such as, as Gallery 110 North, you as a member, you have that opportunity. You don't need to worry about if your work is, is as good or better than anyone else's. You have that opportunity. Um, for some people, the first time in their life, they've always wanted to you know, be able to partake in something like this, participate, and they actually have the opportunity here at the Art Center, and that's what's so beautiful about it. It isn't that we just show the big names, mm -hmm. we give the people that, you know, the, the little guy that's, that's creative a chance. Mm -hmm. I know, and just taking a tour before the show, I just noticed, I mean, you have some works here, mm -hmm. you know, that you've done personally, and I also noticed that our WSCS station director, Carrie Kautzer, also has a painting on display. Exactly, exactly. So. And, and I have to add to that, that several of these pieces that you see hanging on the wall are my former students' work. And I can't tell you how proud I am mm -hmm. that they have, they're, they're actually hanging in this show. It's just, it's a, it's a real, you know. Definitely. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Um, Ladies, if you could just give our audience, you know, an idea of what is art or your idea of art? You know, I mean, art has been around for centuries. You know, and what is it other than a person's first name? Well, I, years and years ago, I had a teacher and he would not, he said he would never call himself an artist. He was a painter or he was a potter or he was a draftsman or whatever, but he would never give himself the title artist. And I, I don't agree with that philosophy. I believe that if you have a creative um, part in your nature, no matter how it comes out in sewing, in, in, in making quilts or crocheting or whatever that you do, that you're able to do that is that comes from you, comes solely from you, whether it's singing, acting, um, dancing, anything at all that comes from you even if you just sit down and doodle, mm -hmm. and you do the best doodle in the world, you know, this is your creation. To me, art is creation. Definitely. Donna, would you care to add? Um, I can agree fully with Kitty. Uh, I don't consider myself an artist, but since I've been employed at the Art Center, which I'm in my 16th year now, I've seen so many forms of artwork come through the door and uh, you know we have like Kitty said dancers, musicians, uh, singers and people that are you know creative writing and uh, for myself I thought well I'm not an artist you know but I, I love to do the business side mm -hmm. and the administrative side but I found myself making posters and thinking hey I'm pretty good at this <laughs> and I never I never really realized I could do that but I found that you know I like it and I, I'm very happy to do it and so I think we all have a little bit of creativity inside mm -hmm. of us. And mm -hmm. Sometimes it just takes a teacher to bring that out. And I can speak firsthand uh, about Kitty uh, and her teaching uh, here at the Art Center. We've been so proud of her all these years. And we were really sorry that she retired, but we un certainly understand that she had to move on in, in her own life. And uh, But I know that her students have come to the Art Center for more than just uh, art class. Mm -hmm. It has been an art therapy class. Uh, they can, mm -hmm. came here to relax, to be fulfilled, and uh, you know, we just saw them t transform right before our eyes while they were in class with Kitty. And Kitty always said, um, if you have the desire, I can teach you. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of that over the years, and so I mm -hmm. want to say again how proud we are of Kitty and all of her, <laughs> all of her teaching here at the Art Center. Excellent. Well, and, and that's why we, ha we have you on the show this time for this episode is, you know, with art, you have to have both. You have to have the people who are creative creating art, but then you also have to have the people who appreciate that creativity mm -hmm. and want to see it, you know, mm -hmm. their envy, 
they're in awe. You know, I mean, there's two sides to it, which, you know, is part of our whole community and our culture. Right. And when you, you know, when you speak to the lifestyles, um, you know, healthy lifestyles, mm -hmm. part of your program, you know, without art, I can tell you that uh, any, any grade school teacher will tell you that if they take away the arts out of the school, the children will suffer. They'll, tr they'll suffer with their other studies, mathematics, uh, with their reading, with their, uh, with their behavior even. If you take the arts uh, uh, away from them, and if you take the arts away from the, the say the elderly, all right, uh, if they don't, if they have always been told, no, you can't do that. You've got to get married. You've got to get a job. You've got to raise those kids. And then they finally get that chance to pursue something that they've always wanted to pursue, you know. And then you see them just blossom, just open up. And here, out of this person, you just look at them and you think, Gosh, I can't believe that they would have an artistic bone in their body. Mm -hmm. And yet they're like flowers opening up and budding and blooming. And without the arts, without the opportunity, what would happen to these people? Mm -hmm. They just kind of dry up. Mm -hmm. I'd like to also comment on, and I agree with you 100%. I think art is not only creativity, but it's a form of expression. Exactly. And, anoth and another part of tools that we use in our evolvement. So, you know, when we're younger, it's how do you, what's the what's the answer to the puzzle or the answer to the question and you use your creativity you know when you're young by drawing the pictures the coloring books and stuff mm -hmm. and it forces you to or i shouldn't say forces you but encourages you know one to use their mind to grow which then they can use in their studies mm -hmm. you know nowadays everything is so high tech and complicated mm -hmm. it helps mm -hmm. build that creativity as well right. right exactly exactly which is needed in today's you know a society exactly right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. and of course we can always learn from our elders as well as they continue to evolve and express themselves in different forms mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and you know and um, I think that uh, um, art is always evolving there is there's always there's always a um, a shift in what is popular. I remember there was a time when pot, when computers were so popular mm -hmm. and all of a sudden computer art became very popular yep. and that was the thing. And then there was a shift toward f photography and that was the thing. Then for a long time, watercolor paintings were the thing and oil paintings or pastels, mm -hmm. they weren't so popular, you know, and then, then the shift went back to oils and now, now I think we're, we're seeing a new shift in the direction of art and I think it's more towards the cutting edge and it's kind of reflects the type of lifestyle that everyone is living mm -hmm. right now and that is a a, uh, uh, a more forceful quicker um, you know it's almost like a uh, we're turning into a throwaway art mm -hmm. society in the sense that you can create it fast um, and you can dispose of it and make something new you know you you have these little pens that you can doodle sure. on your computer and and boom you got it and boom you delete it and you know so we're we are changing we're evolving uh, but I must say though that that real fine art will never go out of style there'll always be a place for it there'll always be a place for the masters and the masters of mm -hmm. yesteryear are you know the the masters of today will be the, the become the masters of yesteryear fine art will always persevere right great and to your point you know everything is what you call disposable it also makes it easier to build on what you've already done like mm -hmm. here I mean, you've done a painting it's right. beautiful but on a computer i can do that now well i want to take this little piece out and now i can build on that or do that which right. makes it you know here where if you want to do that well then you get another piece of canvas and you start over which right. makes it your true you know hardcore art so to speak as far as um Know, that weathers over the times right exactly you know like exactly. your masterpieces that you say mm -hmm. yeah it brings me back to you know we started out when in kindergarten first grade we had art class and you had to draw a house where it was the square and then the roof and then the <laughs> door with the dot and then the cross windows and mine, maybe a chimney mine still look like yeah, that <laughs> exactly well i was in, when i was in college i had a drawing class and we had to draw 
it was like a house or whatever and all that we were going or you know models and factories with the class we had we had assignments and I went to my instructor well that's simple I can draw a house in a matter of seconds and I did that same thing what I did a year ago I thought he was in the fall over laughing you know because of <laughs> Was, he appreciated the, you know, which was kind of neat. Yes, but now then, I have to bring you to this, though. When you drew that house, okay, didn't you have fun? Oh, it was a blast. You enjoyed it. Yeah. And so what did that do for your body? What did that do for your soul? What did that do for your heart? It lifted you up. It lifted, it did it, a couple things. It put you at ease and relaxed you, but yet it raised your level of energy. Yeah, exactly, which, see? Yeah. And, that's, and that's what this is all about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, what are some of the forms of art you have here at the Art Center itself here in Plymouth? Could you speak to that? Okay. Well, uh, we start out with our Fine Arts program, which is our, our gallery program here in Gallery mm -hmm. 110 North. And as I mentioned before, that we have six shows per year. Uh, each one is totally different. Uh, sometimes you might see a, a total glass show or a print show or it could be a wood show. Uh, the one coming up next is going to be abstract art. Uh, we have an artist coming in from Lac de Flambeau and uh, her art is very, very contemporary. So every show is different, so we encourage people to always come back and check on us every couple weeks because we're gonna change that show and have something new and fresh. Uh, in addition to the gallery program, we also have several special events that are, you know, considered fine art events. And uh, Kitty has uh, coordinated our Paint the Town event for mm -hmm. many years. And uh, we do have a new coordinator this year. Dan Rizai is going to coordinate that for us. But that is an event where we invite artists from the Midwest, basically, to come in and paint for a whole week in Plymouth, the Plymouth area. And we have boundaries set, and uh, they come in and get their canvas stamped, and it's a plein air event. So uh, they might paint houses in the community or downtown businesses. And then we have a big party at the end, and we have a silent auction, and uh, people come in and bid on pieces, and artists receive awards. We have purchase awards. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a great, fun event for the community, and it also gives mm -hmm. artists a chance to show their work in a, in a different format. And then uh, we also have an event coming up in it's our second annual, which is the Northern Marine Spring Art Tour, another fine art event where we encourage local artists to open their studios. And we have several artists participating in Sheboygan this year. Uh, we have Frank Juarez and Dale Knack, and we also have the SVA artists opening their studio. We go as far as Kiel with the Obler Art Glass, over nice. to Elkhart for Two Fish Gallery, and uh, then in the country we have some of our uh, member artists, Richard and Pam Bronk. Pam is our coordinator for that event, and right here in Plymouth we have several studios that are opening. Kitty will be at the Saranya studio mm -hmm. with her work, and uh, Susan Radke, the owner, will be there showing her work, and a number of other artists there as well. Plus we'll have artists here right at the Art Center. We'll have Dan Rizai will be set up here in the great room, and we'll probably have at least um, you know half a dozen to ten artists uh, here in uh, our gallery and our great room. And then we go all the way to Random Lake, and uh, we have the Monlocks over there with their pottery studio. So it gives people a chance to get into some of the private studios. Lori Beringer is on the tour. You can go and tour her studio and uh, see how the artists are creating and what their space looks mm -hmm. like, and you can get an up-close and personal look. So in addition to that, uh, we have a whole program of performance art and uh, in February alone we're going to jump from a sock hop to a Broadway and Hollywood show on Valentine's night to a classical music show on the 20th of February and then Kitty is going to take a bus uh, load of people down to Milwaukee at the end of the month and take them to see Cabaret. So we okay. offer yeah, you know, Cabaret. Cabaret the musical and uh, it's a, the Broadway production. So we have a uh, you know, great variety mm -hmm. of things going on here mm -hmm. at the Art Center, uh, in addition to our full uh, education program, which is taught now by Lori Beringer and Mary Roll 
and Kathleen Mulholland, and then we have other guest teachers that come in. So we kind of do it all, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe not on a large scale for some of the activities, but uh, for a community of you know just over 8,000, we have a pretty, really active art center. How many people would you say visit the art center over a year on I average? I would say that we're probably right around 20,000 if you consider all the activities that we do in addition to our jazz crawl which is a great big hit every year we mm -hmm. run that event the second Friday in August and we have at least 10 to 12 bands playing throughout Plymouth downtown Plymouth and here at the Art Center and we have a big auction mm -hmm. and you know it's just a fun food you know lots of lots of things to do that evening so I think with all of those events it's right around 20,000 what type of facilities do you have here at the Art Center to actually host or even configure to have all these activities? Well, we have a huge great room, which um, we remodeled our building back in 2012, which is the second time the building has okay. been remodeled. It's, it's an old car garage. It was a Chevrolet dealership and auto body shop. And our former gallery was in the old showroom of the uh, car dealership. And uh, so we trans form that gallery now into a classroom where we have beautiful natural light and then moved our gallery to the west side of the building where we're sitting right mm -hmm. today and uh, so the the gallery here doesn't have any windows which is perfect for for and artwork for light, yeah. and uh, we just um, we were really happy that we uh, did the remodeling. We were, you know, very fortunate to have the support of uh, the Gentine Foundation and the Sargento uh, Company to help us lead the way on our capital campaign and we were able to remodel mm -hmm. it. And uh, we feel very, very fortunate to have a great big space that is a, pretty much like a black box theater sure. that we can change any way we want. Uh, we have a state-of-the-art sound system and theater lights. So we can do a lot of concerts and, and theater performances. And you know, then if somebody wants to rent the room for a bridal shower or a wedding, uh, we've you know, actually rented it out for those kinds of things as well. Yeah. Nice. Can I? I sure. I, I, I just want. I just want to, to uh, add one thing to this. What it all boils down to, is that the art, is touching, this whole community and beyond. So whether you are artistically inclined or not, you are still part of the mm -hmm. arts because you come here and you partake of the arts. Sure. Sure, and I just wanted to go a little bit further with that point is, you know, as our show title is Quality of Life, and we touched about it before, art brings a certain level of quality to our life, whether in our home, here at the Art Center, or out in public. And, you know, within Sheboygan County, um, how have the arts have changed, and how does that help our culture, our community? Because along with that, you know, if you go to a friend's house, don't see every room with bare walls. You see some type of art, mm -hmm. some type of decoration. Something's hanging in the wall. So, you know, even on the Flintstones when you watch it, they had stuff hanging <laughs> on the walls, sure. you know, as far as pictures or arts or whatever. Mm -hmm. So what is it that ties it all together and what's going on and how has it changed over the years in Sheboygan County that really brings it all together and raises our quality of life? I think for myself, I believe it's growth. When I first moved here, uh, 25 years ago, there weren't nearly the opportunities. And then the art center here opened up and uh, gradually more and more um, different art, um, 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 I would say clubs or, or uh, art groups uh, began forming. And it just, uh, and art, as far as like, um, the Mill Street Guild, and it, it just seems they're a they're a performing group. You know, it seems to me that it has grown. It ha it just keeps getting larger and larger, and that's what is the most important thing: is that uh, the, the growth, the growth, the growth itself proves to you that you this is what is needed. This mm -hmm. is what the people want. This is what is needed. And that's why there is such a tremendous growth. Excellent. 
As a, a nonprofit group, um, you know, we are always looking for new sponsors and uh, new donors, and we have lots of opportunities uh, because we're a nonprofit. We don't have a huge staff, and uh, it's kind of a natural thing if in the nonprofit mm -hmm. world that you don't have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a huge staff. So we're always looking for volunteers, and I think what the Arts Center here in Plymouth uh, provides is an opportunity for people to get involved in the arts, like Kitty right. said. Uh, even if you're not feeling like you can create, you can certainly come in and work behind the scenes if you can build mm -hmm. something or or if you can, you know, help us with a mailing or, you know, just uh, maybe even cleaning sure. or serving at a show or ushering. There's really lots of opportunities. And um, a couple months ago, someone had mentioned to me, you know, I really don't, I'm not an artist. I, I really don't like art, you know. And I said, well, do you listen to the radio? Oh, yeah, I love the radio. Well, if you love music, you love art because it's all, all mixed together. Right. <laughs> so um, I think people don't, sometimes they, when you say art center, they get the idea that, oh my gosh, you know, that's pretty uh, a stuffy place mm -hmm. or uh, an elite place, but it certainly isn't. And uh, I think a lot of people's eyes were opened a few years ago here in Plymouth. We did the Wall Dog Project, which uh, we brought in. Uh, you know, 100 artists, and they were painting all over town on our buildings. And we are proudly displaying about 26 murals uh, today. And, mm -hmm. and Dale Knack actually uh, did our first one here in Plymouth, um, just down the street. And so we're really proud of that. And I think uh, people really uh, said, hey, we love art. You know, we love those mm -hmm. uh, murals. And so it was a different form of art. Mm -hmm. And we have visitors from all over the world coming to see our our murals mm -hmm. and uh, get their picture taken in front of right. front of the murals <laughs> and buy those postcards and so um, lots of forms of art yep. here at Plymouth. I know one thing I think which kind of helps sum this up we're gonna have to wrap here in a little bit but I myself I love nature I love being out in nature just to walk I like to sit and watch animals I do like to hunt but when I'm out there it just it's therapeutic to me mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so when I see a picture like this, you know, or some of the other pieces in here, I'm drawn to nature type pictures mm -hmm. because what it does is that's a snapshot in time for me that I can relate to and go back to, which triggers memories, which is very therapeutic. Exactly. So, exactly. As far as that goes, uh, you have really summed it up. That, yeah, yep. that's really that's really what it's about. And each th that painting or any of the paintings on the walls here in the gallery, um, whoever looks at it will see something different in it, and that's the importance in art because it touches each person in a different way. Mm -hmm, definitely. Well, ladies, I'd like to thank you for coming on the show and talking about art. This has been really interesting and informative for me, as well as I'm sure for our home audience. Um, for Quality of Life, um, I'm Dave Augustine, and I'd like to thank Kitty and Donna for being on the show. If you'd like a CD copy of it, you can contact us on our website at www.wsgboygan.com. For Quality of Life, I'm Dave Augustine. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Dave. Thank you.